my new sewing area over here. This is this was originally meant to be the dining room in the house. However, we have an eat-in kitchen right there. And it's just the two of us. Oh, and there's Cricket peeking around the corner, eating and drinking, of course, because the camera's running. So uh, my Clavinova, which is an, like an electric piano, is my grandmother. She used to sit here. And now I have put a sewing desk in. So I'm going to show you how I have it set up. It's in a perfect location because with this window here, it gives me a lot of natural light, which is really nice. So the chair is one of our dining room chairs. There's another one there. That's Dave's little craft desk. And this one's mine. Um, our dining room has 10 chairs that go to it. It opens up. We thought that would be big enough for our family. We had no idea at the time we would get 11 grandchildren. So now we can't even fit just the children alone at the table, but <laughs> we're very blessed. So here's the table. Now I have this light if I need extra lighting. And there's Cricket drinking out of her bowl. And here's my sewing machine, which is a brother and the number on it is an XR3774 and it does have an actual plate that goes over the top of this for quilting I haven't used that I've had this machine for about a year now my old one I had for 30 some years and it literally was horrible to work with because it knotted all the time I think I spent about 160 for this one and so far I like it. I have not done any of these fancy stitches. I just do the standard stitch. So this desk has three drawers. The bottom drawer is meant to be like a filing cabinet drawer, but I don't use it for that. And then over here, it has two shelves and I have two do uh, Dollar Tree baskets that fit on there perfectly. Right now I've got dishcloths that I'm making stored in there. And the top one is empty right now. So let's look at what I have in each of my drawers. The top one here, these are a whole bunch of extra sewing needles. And these are, these are sewing machine needles. These are actual sewing needles. That It's a little uh, plastic canvas that I made and then I put flannel inside and so my sewing needles are just stuck through that. And then this is sewing machine oil and these are not sucrets. That is, this was in a uh, bundle of my great aunts or great great aunts things. Um, inside here actually keep them like um, embroidery needles, the heavier or needlepoint needles. So then I have my pins and my seam ripper and a tape measure and various scissors, you know, like I have some pinking shears in here and some smaller ones. And then I have a Fisker's um, rotary cutter thing. I have not used this yet because I don't have a mat to like cut it on. So, yeah, so I have that. And then this here are parts that go to my sewing machine. Um, those are some of the attachments and like the screwdriver and things to open up, um, like to, to um, unscrew where the needle goes and things like that. So these are all sewing machine parts in here. And this is a wooden spool. It's old Coates and Clark. Uh, some of the thread, and I'll show it to you in a few minutes, some of the thread that I have was my grandmother's and she passed away in the early 2000s uh, so she's been gone probably about 15 or 16 years um, no not that quite that long she's been gone about 12 years and so um, some of the, the thread and things that I have were hers and I save these as I run across them um, as I use the thread off of them because they stopped making wooden spools in the early 1970s so um, it's hard to believe, but this is over 40 years old then. So I just saved them. I have a, I have a clear vase upstairs that 
I just toss them into and one day I'll figure out something to do with them but I just think they're kind of neat so we'll go to drawer number two I sound like a game show this down here is just the cover that goes over top of the sewing machine and I left that off so you could see the sewing machine so in here I used to have uh, one of those tool indexes that had a bunch of little drawers in it and I took the drawers out because it had dividers and things and this was actually my grandfather's in tool index and I use it to sort my buttons so I've got buttons some of them are my grandmother's buttons this is these are different fasteners um, some I've bought most I have not most I got from my grandmother or I took them off of shirts when I would get rid of a shirt I would cut the buttons off so the in fact you can see some of the threads still on some of those buttons so I have buttons here I have grommets and then back here are snaps and these are just kind of odds and ends there's some hook and eyes in here there's some plastic nylon snaps and these were from knit crate a few months ago they're like little labels and that's just a spare piece of material I haven't figured out what I want to do with it and I forget what I've got in here oh and this is just random odd things like a small pin cushion there's a um, light bulb for my um, sewing machine and I have a couple of these these I thought for the longest time I had a whole bag of these and I thought they were matches until I opened it up one day and realized it was from a fabric center that is no longer in business. The building's still there, but the fabric store is long gone. And it is a sewing kit. So I have a couple of those. And then drawer number three. I have some of my spools of um, thread here. I have white and black and green and then I have some ribbon down there and then this is what I have left of the elastic. I used a lot of my elastic when I um, made a bunch of masks so I don't have that much elastic anymore. And then this is a box full of zippers. They're zippers that I've either taken off of things uh, before I got rid of them or that I bought. Uh, there's a fabric discount place up in Shippensburg and I've stopped in there before and gotten um, zippers fairly cheap. So, And what sits in here, as well I'll show you next, it's, it's the thread that I have. So this is like a Rubbermaid container and it can unsnap in three parts. And so this was my, a lot of the thread that's in here was my grandmother's. And you can see all of the wooden spooled threads would date to early 70s or earlier. So um, I have them kind of grouped by color, like these are navy blues and then I have blacks and browns and then I have whites. And again, I use some of those little drawers from my grandfather's um, tool index and then this just unsnaps on both sides and you can lift off the next layer and you can tell a lot of this was from the 60s and 70s with all the kind of minty greens and the oranges and the turquoises but you can see I have a good bit of the uh, wooden spools And then the last one I have here. Is like reds and pinks. And yellows. And then because you know I love my lighthouses. I don't know where the little lighthouse came from. The, paint, the picture, the coloring is from my mom. She was doing the adult coloring books there for a while. So I have that. 
and then right up above it that is the Portland headlight in Maine and then there's some other lighthouses on both sides all of which are from Maine except for this one this one is in New York and then I have a little lighthouse on the cross here and then there's the Ten Commandments up there so this is my little sewing corner and I really like it it's nice and bright and uh, I didn't show you what these baskets look like I got, I got these from the Dollar Tree I believe I think that's where I got them for, from I think they were maybe two for a dollar something like that so they're about 10 inches by six or seven inches and they fit perfectly underneath on these shelves that are right over here and that's the foot press for my sewing machine So I hope you've enjoyed the tour of my new sewing table and I am enjoying it and getting a lot of use out of it so far. Thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up.